So, good morning everyone. Uh, we are here today because I would like to show you what actually is possible with the Open Build service um, to create not only packages and distributions, uh, but also the new and shiny containers. Uh, in fact, OpenSUSE Build Service gives you the possibility to build RPMs, uh, to build containers, appliances, um, all using the same user interface and the really powerful backend. So without any further ado, I would like to, to point you to the also the other uh, recording that I have uh, created, which introduces a little bit the Open Build service, how you basically create an account, uh, how does your own project look like, and what is the process that people follow uh, to have a new package offered in the various different OpenSUSE distributions. So that would be really the introduction that you would need to watch before this episode here. But without any further ado, I would like you to, to start uh, going through the details of how we create uh, containers. So when you, land, when you land on the main page uh, of the build um, service, you'll see that you have uh, different icons just here in front of you uh, and they are really self-explanatory but the one that we are mostly interested in would be the new image icon. The uh, new image icon uh, will show, will open up a new page uh, which basically allows the user to choose among a variety of different uh, targets uh, between uh, distributions type and uh, the tools that we want to use to uh, develop this new image. What I would like to, to do today is to create a new container uh, for our Tumbleweed distribution. Tumbleweed is the rolling release for OpenSUSE. And I would like to use the Kiwi tool uh, specifically because it may not be so uh, familiar to people. Uh, Docker is very well known, so how you create a Docker file, it's pretty much a done deal these days. So I would like to show you how you do this through Kiwi. So once you chose container built using Kiwi in the section referred to the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, then we go to the bottom of the page and we just name our appliance. And our appliance will look like something like this, test OpenSUSE dash test dash container image. And we hit creating appliance. Once we have this done, then a new page opens up and it is actually our container. And the first thing that you will notice is um, that the, the page does not look any different from what a normal standard RPM package project would look like. This is really powerful because it gives you uh, a continuity in terms of user experience. So we go click on view package and this is where our work environment is. Uh, you'll notice there are various different files uh, the most important one, I have to say, is the config.kiwi. In fact, the config.sh in most circumstances can be, can be removed. We will do it right away. And uh, the icon file can also be removed. We'll do it right away. So we'll end up with a service file and a config.kiwi file. What you'll have to remember is, uh, if you are doing this, uh, with the uh, long-term view of submitting your container to, uh, to a development project, which is an official development project, or to the distribution itself, then there are some uh, details that you need to, 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 to keep in mind to make sure that the process of acceptance 
from the uh, various maintainers is as smooth as possible for you. So the first thing that we will need to remember is this container, which is again nothing else than a normal package, uh, we will have to have a dot changes file. So let's call it, let's, let's create it, that file. The dot changes file, as you may know, uh, basically is a file supporting your work to make sure that every change happened in the, in the, in the project itself can be tracked and can be seen. And similarly, what you will need is a license file, right? So let's create those two files so that they are here. And let's also make sure that the config.changes file contains some information, right? Let's pretend that we are doing these for submission. So we'll just put it here. This is Marco's new container uh, image. Save. Perfect. So file is saved. We can go, oh no, stay on the page. Okay, now it's saved, perfect. Sorry, but the internet connection is quite slow today. So let's go into config Kiwi file and in here we'll see that there are some information that are predefined, pre-created thanks to Fabian Bogt, who is the guy behind uh, containers creation in the build service. Most of the uh, work that it's possible today for, for us, it's thanks to him and many others as well. So the first thing that we will need to look at is the image section and let's first of all rename or let's put the new name that we have in the attribute name here. So that is the first thing. Then obviously we want to change the author to reflect who's working on this and a brief specification for this container. So we just call it OpenSUSE uh, Tumbleweed Container Container Test Image. That's it. Then the, the next section that we want to look at is the preferences and the container config. We need to remember that here the name is actually going to be used also with regards to the uh, path of um, this container in, uh, uh, in the registry itself. So we want to make sure that it's reflecting a little bit of a URL type of syntax. So we call it OpenSUSE forward slash test container image and then I'll show you later some interesting things about the additional tags and some macros that we can use to make our life easier so then we want to go and change the title um, value to something that is more meaningful well in this case it's really open source container test image, nothing too complicated. And the description, which should be a little bit uh, more complex uh, and provide some more information. So we just put it here. Uh, this is a container test image to showcase the power of ODS. And again, the version and the creation time and the vendor, we put in here our name, uh, the URL, yes, let's keep it as is, and then the registry, which is where our uh, container will live. So we just call it open source uh, container test image column version. I'll show you later what we're going to do with here with the version. So we again change this, change the email, we 
call it here again this is a custom container image uh, then what we want to do is to add some packages right um, without too much going into details of what a type bootstrap versus a type image uh, is I would just leave this up to the documentation for you to, 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 to read. Uh, we can just have here a, a package which are which is which is something that it's interesting this this these days. Uh, and because I am very interested uh, sorry because I am very interested these days in artificial intelligence I would like to add the package TensorFlow 2 to this container and all this can be removed okay so we save we have saved this container and if we go back well, it will take some time for the build to, re to kick off again let's give it a little bit Hinge. So now it's building. While this, while the build happens, uh, I will show you what I meant before about some interesting macros that we can use to make our life easier. And we go and take exactly a container uh, for TensorFlow 2 which is already offered through the Open Source Registry, who has um, a project already in, uh, in the build service. And I will show you what's really interesting about these uh, macros. So first of all, in the service file, uh, we can instruct OBS to use some service that allow us to extrapolate the version of, uh, of the package itself the one that we are actually shipping through the container and expose that value through a macro. In that case, it's package version. And we just simply need to put here the same package that we are obviously shipping with the container. So let's do this. We, we can take this code, all nice and tested, and we just put it in our service file. That's it. Now, how are we actually using these macros? Well, in the Kiwi file, if we open the, the file, this, this official project, then we will see that, in first of all, in the additional tags here of the uh, container config, uh, we are using package version and release to have a, a little bit more of a detail in terms of tagging for, this, for the images not just for the latest tag so we could basically use this but what's uh, what's really interesting to use the package version is as well for the title so to give it a little bit more of a meaning for whoever is going to use this container uh, to use the same package version in the description uh, as well as using it for the version itself so using a package version and a release to to really show how, um, not, not to show how, but to, to, to show w which package version this container actually ships. And it's really interesting to use the same version and release of the package for this container, so that basically every time this container gets rebuilt because of its uh, uh, shipped container, shipped package gets rebuilt, automatically this container will reflect the right information uh, that the package contains. So you have to remember that uh, due to dependencies and due to also specific updates of packages, um, what we really want to make sure is that when the package TensorFlow 2 in this case uh, gets updated by uh, its maintainer or if the package itself is not a new package but uh, gets rebuilt because of uh, dependencies 
that are part of the operating system itself, then we want to make sure that the container also gets rebuilt. And this is already done automatically um, by OBS. But then, what's really important for somebody that's maintaining uh, the container is that this person does not have to remember or does not have to know or does not have to be notified that a new package has been built and shipped and so the container needs to be updated. The last thing that we want to do is to have to update the Kiwi file continuously just to reflect uh, the new version of the new dot release uh, change of the package. We want that to be taken care of automatically. And this is exactly why you want to use these macros to ensure that the, the, uh, the burden of maintenance for you uh, of the container itself is the bare minimum. And this is what basically these macros guarantee you to do. Now, uh, you'll have to remember that um, automatically when you get your container supported in factory or in a, in a develop project, then this container uh, gets published automatically. That is not true for your uh, home project container. And so if you are interested to show to the outside world how your container looks like or you want people to... to to start using your container, uh, well, you'll have to remember to basically go into the repositories and turn on the publish flag here, so that basically when your container is built, automatically gets published. Where does it actually get published? Well, it gets published on the opensuse.registry.org. registry.opensource.org yes, my bad which is basically a notary for all the, con all the containers that people can develop and publish through their own project or the official um, uh, containers who are the ones that have landed in a factory for instance and in here you'll see um, well, yeah, first of all, you, you, you have to choose what you want to use, but then we can look for our package which exists here on the, the notary registry for OpenSUSE. And the, the actual uh, front end allows you to just simply copy the, the instruction to basically pull this container automatically in your uh, in, on your machine so that you can run it. It's all very convenient and it all starts from having the same front end which is OBS that allow you to create packages and to create containers. And as I said, please watch for the other video tutorial that explain you a little bit how the OBS uh, is organized how the user uh, um, life cycle development looks like, how the process that you need to um, uh, that you need to adhere to uh, looks like, and all this is just to make your life uh, much easier and your um, development experience smoother when it comes down to the submission to the official projects that uh, build the distribution. I really hope. That this video tutorial was useful and please do not hesitate to reach out to me my name is again Marco Verlese and my email is marco.verlese at suse.com please reach out to me and I will be very happy to answer any questions you may have thank you very much enjoy the hacking and I really look forward to seeing more containers from you on OBS thank you very much